Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of What Nobody Told Me After 65. Well, it's your lady on the go, lady in the know, Miss Info. You have reached the Information Nation, where knowledge is shared and wisdom exchanged for the betterment of the people. Good evening. I'm feeling much better, thank you. Um, but it is still allergy season here. It's lasting a long time, a lot longer than I'm used to. Um, but I'm, I'm taking the medication. It's a process. What can I say? I want to talk to you about something um, that's been bothering me for a while now probably for about a year or so, Um, and I'm going to title this topic, What is Wrong with This Picture? So as you know, the Olympics, Summer Olympics, they're all over, and we had some controversy. Uh, We had a female player who was shipped home immediately. I I think she said they didn't even let her pack her bags because she stayed out all night, she said she was sightseeing with her boyfriend. Now, he was an Olympian, too, but he was allowed to apologize and stay. She had to leave. Double standard. Then, we had the bronze medal fiasco between the U.S. and Romania. Um, That was in the gymnastics game. And in the end, uh, Romania kept the bronze, and um, our young lady, she didn't get it. I I don't know how that's going to turn out, um, but I think the U.S. is going to um, oppose it and, and make a big stink. But the thing that really got me in the Summer Olympics was this uh, utterly clownish break dancer from Australia who actually won. <laughs> she won. However, it was a swan song. It was the first and the last, thank God. Uh, break dancing won't be back. And there was so much backlash over the uh, Australian woman who won She's a, a, a teacher, for goodness sake, with a Ph.D. in breakdancing. Really? <laughs> I, I need a Ph.D. in talking. <laughs> but anyway, while I was reviewing um, and, and reading the comments and, and just thinking to myself, wow, you know, we have bigger fish to fry right now. Um, I came across a story that didn't get too much press. And like I said, about a year ago when I realized that the platform that um, the vice president was um, championing championing, um, was maternal health, women's maternal health. And um, I thought, wow, that's an unusual place to hang your hat, but other vice presidents, you don't really hear too much about what they were doing, and because she's a woman, and a black woman, um, she had heard and read and been uh, around some very harrowing uh, stories, and so that became uh, something that she focused on. So when I came across this story, It sort of rang true, and it piqued my interest, if you will. So this was an article about an Olympic athlete who had died. This was in 2023, and we hardly heard any mention of it. I mean, I'm a news person. I'm a news hog. That's what I do. And I may have seen it, but after you hear what happened and uh, some of the um, circumstances, 
I think you'll be as interested as I was. So being curious like I am, I did a bit of homework, my inquiring mind. So here's the scoop. In 2023, in May to be exact, the sheriff's deputies in Orange County, Florida, found 32-year-old Tori Bowie dead, an Olympic sprint champion, probably in the greatest shape and the greatest health of her life. She was dead. An autopsy revealed she died from complications from respiratory distress and eclampsia, eclampsia. That's um, a seizures that uh, occur in the second half of pregnancy. It's a very serious condition and Tori was eight months pregnant. Also, the report revealed that she suffered from bipolar disorder, <clears throat> which of course is a mental health issue. She hadn't been seen by a medical provider on a regular basis. She often skipped her prenatal appointments and <clears throat> she dreaded hospital confinement. She had excellent insurance and the financial means to afford first rate care. So why did she die? Here we have arguably one of the fastest women on the planet, a double world champion dead from what other women go through every day. A simple pregnancy, at least that's what it should have been, a simple pregnancy. She was, after all, eight months pregnant. So she'd done enough to get to the eighth month. She only had one more month to go. However, we also find that her baby daughter, whom the family named Ariana, or whom she had named Ariana, was stillborn. A complete tragedy. Some of you may know that Vice President Harris has been at the forefront of women's health issues. It's called the maternal mortality crisis. Um, and that has been a Biden administration focus point. But it's been an uphill battle as all of her um, proposals uh, have struggled to get any legislative support. Despite the fact that according to the CDC, in 2021, there was a 40% increase in maternal deaths in the U.S. over the previous year. That puts the U.S. maternal mortality rate at 10 times the rate of countries such as Australia, Germany, and Japan. This danger is even more acute in black women. We are three times more likely than our white counterparts to die from pregnancy-related complications. So much of the disparity comes down to healthcare providers ignoring black women's birthing preferences and concerns just completely ignoring what we ask them to do for us. Now, here's two names that you'll be familiar with that you probably didn't know that they had suffered some of the same issues, Beyonce and Serena Williams. There are two, wo two women who have exposed their own harrowing experiences. In 2017, Beyonce experienced the same life-threatening condition while pregnant with twins. In 2010, Serena Williams also, she had suffered blood clots before giving birth to her daughter, Olympia. And after she delivered, she was experiencing what she said was loss of feelings in her legs. She insisted on tests 
to see if the clots, remember she had blood clots previously, and I think what the doctors had told her that if you have blood clots and we eradicate them, they're subject to come back, and that was her fear. So she asked to have some tests done. As a matter of fact, she told him she needed a CT scan and a something, something. She was astute enough to know what the name of the tests were, and she pushed for them. However, the hospital staff didn't do anything. They saw her as being pushy and overly cautious, and of course she's rich. She got money. But she pushed and pushed until finally her uh, doctor, she got in touch with her doctor and her doc doctor ordered the test. But not until after she began coughing so violently that she busted her cesarean section stitches. And while they were taking her into surgery to repair that, that's when the doctor said, run the test. And guess what? She had a blood clot. She had a blood clot um, in her abdomen, and she needed immediate surgery. Immediate surgery to save her life, because that clot could travel to her heart and to her brain. Suppose she hadn't been who she was. Perhaps then the story would have been much different. It would have had a very different ending. As a matter of fact, Serena wrote um, an editorial on this very subject. And she felt the same way. She could have died. So, what if you were a regular Jane, Jane Doe? and you ask for the same test. You think they're gonna give them to you? Probably not. Even if you can afford them, probably not. Because the medical professional feels like, you're not the doctor, I am. Who are you to tell me how to do my job? You know, we get into all of that foolishness. But I know my body better than anybody else. If I tell you something's different, something doesn't feel right, this doesn't feel right, trust me. So, every day, about 830 women across the globe, now that's worldwide, die from preventable causes related to pregnancy. 830 across the world. But check this out. According to the World Health Organization, in the U.S., about 700 women die each year. And the risk is even greater in black women. So if 800 across the whole world, but 700 of those 800 is in the U.S., what's wrong with this picture? We got a problem. Advocacy is the key in these instances. Demand, demand, don't just ask for it, demand that governments and businesses and healthcare providers all have to do more to save lives, particularly black women's lives. Here's what Serena said in her editorial, and I quote, together, we can make this change. Together, we can be the change. Don't just talk about it, be about it. I challenge you to share this video with, some, uh, with somebody that you know, somebody that you love, because the life you save may be a loved one. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe, like, share, hit the notification bell, and remember, <laughs> you don't know what you don't know. Take care.